Well, they said, you know, when Brandon Lee died, mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. that happened. So you, you put in like a fake bullet. But also, what happens, they didn't know there's already something, I guess, in there, a casing. So that was the so casing. They, they put in the other, another fake bullet. Well, when you do that, that fake casing turns into a bullet because yes. it's a hard piece of metal. So it'd be just like a firing real bullet. Yeah, apparently they wanted to get the shot with the bullet. You see, you could see the bullet <laughs> so in it. Yeah. And that bullet was in there with the, the, with the, the fake load. casing was in the back already. And someone reloaded it. So that's how he died. Goes right into your body. Goes right into you. But this must have gone right into her eye. No, chest. It went into her chest. Oh, I'm sorry. It, uh, it was either chest or uh, Oh, stomach. my fucking God. I'm sorry, God. chest, because it went Stop. through her chest. Yeah, that was painful to watch. Folks, Fernando doing another video here for more survivalists. I have no idea why people talk so much about things they obviously know nothing about. It's as if I would start explaining how to do a heart transplant when I have no damn idea. Just, yeah, you, you kind of cut and cut the thing out and then stitch it together. I mean, it is on that kind of level. Anyway, talking specifically about what we um, are, are seeing these days with all of these debates regarding guns, movies and such. I'm no a movie prop, a gun armor, you know, that's not my thing. I do know people that do that and I do know guns. So I have a basic amount of information, which obviously a lot of these folks are lacking. Not only just people randomly commenting on a, on a podcast, which is just fine. It it is very scary though when you see this like on 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 the news from people that pretend to know what they're talking about when they have no damn idea so a few things first generally in terms of guns in movies most of the time it is just a piece of plastic what i mean by that it's just injected plastic and it's just very well painted but they're just a piece of plastic or rubber or something like that most most often uh, you'll just see uh, the guns from uh, from further away especially when you have like war movies and everyone has a rifle most of those are just a a, a plastic prop there's really no mechanical uh, going uh, device going on there it will not fire blanks it will not fire real rounds it's just a piece of plastic then you have guns that are specifically made so as to just fire blanks and cannot fire anything else those would be extremely safe for most of these movies where you just see like a um, like a flash and you hear the bang and it's it's okay for certain things right then you have guns that are real guns that have been modified so as to do that and are not capable of firing a uh, real uh, ammunition right and you have guns that have been um, they have the, the firing pin removed or something was uh, done so as to obstruct the gun in such a way that it will not work properly and then you have real guns this is the point where i want to get which is you have real guns very often movie sets and this is because in some cases when you have um a certain scene where the gun is important for example my call python this is a gun that is all over the place in in, in movies it's it's a very visible uh, visibly stunning gun walking dead i'm i'm pretty certain they have uh, um, a few guns for that and they have you know the plastic props especially when you're going to be dropping i mean you're not going to be dropping a, a cult python on the floor all the time that would be stupid these are expensive guns so they have like a plastic prop of that same gun it's sometimes called the hero's gun right and the hero gun may be just a piece of plastic or a, a, a blank firing gun or depending on the needs of the director it may be a real gun for certain scenes and they have some other uh, props for the other scenes where the real gun is not necessary now uh, a real serious armorer a professional you know a guy that is in his uh, in, in his business doing things properly he will have different uh, types of uh, of props and firearms so as to deal with whatever situation is required Required by the director if he's just walking past with a with a, the python in the holster yeah sure plastic gun the the it's injected resin actually it's not play yeah so it's kind of like a plastic so and they look very real i mean something like this i mean maybe not this kind of detail but they will be looking very real now if you need like a scene like look at the you know the the bullets you see the bullets there right well these are not real bullets uh, these are not bullets at all these are just the um snap caps so as to you know take the impact you see you verify before pulling the trigger each time you don't have any kind of real bullets there going on but if the scene calls for something like this you can do this super safe you can drop 
the hammer and yes even for dry fire training this would be one of the safest ways of doing it because the hammer is the, the pin will actually hit that snap cap right so for some of these things you know if Rick is loading his gun and you actually need to see this sort of thing you will often see real guns because there's just you know there's there's no way of, of, of faking it the problem is when you start looking at real guns and blank fired ammunition, right? This is the kind of thing that will fire like a big flash and uh, not an actual bullet, you know, a projectile. This would be the bullet that something like this, like a 9mm would be firing, right? So one of the first things, and you don't need to be a damn genius as to do a, a, a job like this properly. You do need to know about guns. That's certainly a given. You need to know a lot about guns. You need to be extremely responsible. You cannot be a drunk. You cannot be a drug addict. You cannot be like this chick in, in the Rust movie that she had like, you know, pink, blue hair and uh, two different uh, satanic t-shirts. That kind of says a little bit about you. Maybe you're not the responsible person that you want for a movie set where real guns are involved. In, in the case of, of Alec Baldwin, it was a real gun. You know, I said that in the first video. It was a real gun. It's a, uh, not an original cult revolver, which some dumbasses were saying. Those things are hugely expensive. It was like a, like, like a rep it's an actual replica of the cult, you know, very close to it. And for a movie prop that's perfectly fine the, the I think it was a, a Pietro or some of these Italian nice replicas of a 45 cult single action revolver right and the caliber is 45 cult it's a big bullet that's why it went through two people now the, the Brandon Shaw thing where he's explaining that they had a blank and then firing a, another blank on top of the blank that is just make no it obviously shows that he has no idea how guns work that's painfully obvious but if you're curious what happened in that case what was interesting in that case, they were using a Smith & Wesson 629 44 Magnum revolver, a real firearm like they sometimes use in movies. So someone at some point uh, had used that gun for a scene where they needed um, a gun around to look very realistic. So what they did was, then this is not a 44 Magnum, this is a 357 Magnum, which will work in this revolver perfectly fine. So you have to be extremely careful not to mix, mix these things up. But what happened in that case in Brandon's Lee case was that someone needed at some point that gun for a scene where they wanted to have um, a gun that looked realistic. Either they wanted to have those uh, bullets looking on, on this side and this would not have worked. You know, look, look at what I'm doing right now. I'm moving my head away just in case. But you see how, I mean, you're going to be seeing the red from these plastic things, from these plastic snap caps, right? It will not look the same way as a real bullet. So for some of these, you need this kind of look on this end of the gun for some of those scenes. So what the uh, armorer did was pull the bullet, remove the powder, put the bullet back in that is uh, an extreme lack of understanding of how fires work or you know god knows who did that but it's that's, that's simply not the way you should be doing that because you still have the the primer the primer will fire when it even though it has no no powder inside the primer has enough force as to pull push those projectiles with a certain force not enough to do a a, a whole lot of damage but the primer is still working and it's still a dangerous round and I, I, I in fact know of some that were very interesting little gadgets where you uh, it's a, a piece of brass and you just put the primer in there and you put a little pellet on the top and you use the force of the primer so as to actually kind of use the gun a real gun like a pellet gun very cool very dangerous as well but you know the things that are out there in the market or at least used to be so what this guy did was remove the powder put the bullet back in place put it in the gun and someone pull the trigger on that 629 44 Magnum, the, fire, the, the primer uh, you know, fired and pulled the bullet halfway down the barrel. That's what happened with Brandon Lee's gun. There was a bullet stuck halfway down the barrel. So on another movie and another separate occasion, that same gun was used and they put blanks on top of it. What is it that you're doing? So you have 
around here, stuck in the barrel, you have this. You know, this is not a 357 Magnum, this is 9 millimeter, but this is a blank, right? It has a powder charge. It has a primer and it has a, a charge of powder. Charge of powder, projectile, that's how he died. There was um, a discharge of the blank and all of a sudden the guy is dead on the floor because there was an actual round stuck on the barrel that fired with enough force as to actually kill him. That's how it went down. It wasn't that there were, were a couple of blanks on top, one on top of the other. That's simply not how it works. You know, if you fire a blank and then fire another one on top, it, it just does, you know, not, there's no projectile. There's no a, a lead projectile in, in, the, in the gun. So you will not have that kind of situation. But guys, this is basically how it goes. You have to be extremely careful. Depending, a guy that's doing his job responsibly in a set will check this all the time. Depending on the scene, you will get a, a resin prop, you know, chunk of plastic. You will get a, a blank firing gun that is not, uh, has been modified or made from the get go so as to not use real ammunition. And you'll be extremely careful when handling any sort of material that actually fires, especially when it's a real gun with blank. You should check not only what you're firing, but you should check for any obstructions in the barrel as well. This has to look completely unobstructed. If, it's, if there's any kind of obstruction, then you, you have a problem. And as I was explaining before, you, you see how this looks a certain way, and what they want sometimes is this kind of look, right? They want to have that, that lead right going, looking this way, right? Um, and the same goes for some is some of the scenes where, where they open the gun and you see, right? And sometimes I see this when they, they show like, yeah, they have the gun loaded, but instead of having, instead of having this, the, the primer that's unfired, they will do this with an empty. That is a, a very safe way of doing something like that. You know, you open this and you see that, but anyone that knows anything about gun, well, not anything, but anyone that knows a few things about guns will immediately identify that those are empties. It has been fired already. I've seen that in a, in a number of movies, and I guess for someone that doesn't know a whole lot about guns, he's, he's oh yeah, those are the bullets. And it, it kind of, it's, uh, it kills the, the scene when you see that and you know what's going on. But yeah, that's, that's the things done safely. Uh, putting this, right, you would, Maybe one of the things I've also seen was uh, something, you know, a, a, a slightly better armorer that flattened that primer and then replaced it. So you see that it's not perfectly flat like a real primer, but it has been flattened enough so as to actually uh, look a little bit more uh, believable. Uh, with today's uh, high definition TVs, you see the wrinkles of, oh yeah, you flatten that. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's a nice attempt. That's good enough. Uh, or, or you could just make a, a prop primer and just replace it but it would require someone that's very serious and as things are these days you see more and more people just you know getting along with the cheapest possible solution a friend of mine he has a big gun collection and he's he he works like like that he just you know goes to sets he has his guns blanks he's responsible with that but you have to be extremely careful there were guys that act an actor died someone leave me the name there below but an actor died with a, a blank fire Firing um, around, he was in the set, and they were taking a lot of time. And he he pretended like playing Russian roulette, and he said, "Oh, this is taking so long," and pretending to shoot himself. And he actually shot himself because he pressed the muzzle of the gun against his head, and even without a projectile, the pressure is so high that if the gas has nowhere to go, if you do this, it is gonna be blowing a hole in whatever is on its way. So if it's this far away, I'm gonna be getting my hand burned. If it's this close with a blank I'm gonna be making a huge hole in my hand guys th these are no these are these are not toys you have to be extremely careful and uh, an armor has to be extremely responsible about how he goes about all of this the moment you give this to an actor you explain the safety rules and the moment the scene is done you take it away from his hands you don't know that that guy has no reason to be an expert in firearms so he's dangerous with that you explain that he's gonna be using it a certain way the director knows this and you make sure no one is being aimed that with a gun a, a, at no time they, they use actual different techniques mirrors cameras and so on but you avoid pointing a real gun at a person by, at all costs right that's that's essential you just cannot uh, go around that safety rule because if not you're just asking for a tragedy to happen guys it's gonna be all for now if you're interested in my take on survival preparedness as always street survival skills modern survival manual surviving the economic collapse important for everything's going on these days see you in our next video have an awesome day take care